Hi, uh, my name is Lars. I'm 39 years old. I'm currently postdoc at DZNE in the lab of Walker Jackson. And I'm interested in sleep and the connection between sleep and neurodegenerative disease. Yes, that's pretty safe to say. And that's a correct statement. Uh, so what happened was, um, uh, so I'm, I'm on Twitter and there was a hashtag on Twitter that there was Bill Meet Science Twitter and the bill was Bill Nye um, and he was addressed and the idea was that um, scientists like, like me who are on Twitter and love to talk about their own topic um, they wondered if people like Bill Nye who like those people who don't know the guy he's like a huge uh, science communicator in, in the States uh, in, in the United States he's like whenever any, anyone wonders what do scientists say about it then they ask Bill Nye or other people like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson like very very important science communicators with a huge outreach and then small people like me uh, scientists wondered like do, do those guys actually talk to scientists like like us in their free time and um, do they do they ask us for advice and stuff the idea was um, to introduce ourselves to people like Bill Nye and say, hey, well, that's, that's me and I'm, I'm doing this and that. Um, and so I saw people using that hashtag and I thought that's, that's really nice and, and they were introducing themselves in funny ways and I thought I want to contribute to that and uh, I also said, hi, hi Bill, uh, meet me, I'm Lars and I'm interested in sleep research. Um, and so the way Bill Nye reacted to that was uh, absolutely amazing. So he. He, um, I, he could have been offended or something, but what he actually did was he, he replied to that hashtag on his own Twitter account with millions of, I don't know how many followers he has, but a huge amount of followers. And, and, and he actually started forwarding those tweets and said, look at this guy, he's doing amazing stuff on, on wild dogs or, or whatever. And, and that, was, that was really nice. And a few months later I had uh, forgotten all about that and I received an email. Uh, that was, um, hello Lars, I'm working for a TV show on science and we're doing an episode on sleep research and in my background research I came across your amazing research on, on sleep in mice and therefore I would like to have you on the show, uh, please contact me for more information. I thought, I almost deleted that email because I thought that was uh, one of these many spam emails that you get, uh, like please come to this conference or publish in this predatory journal because you're the specialist in like auto fill in topic that you're doing and I thought it was something like this and I almost didn't reply to that and something made me reply and ask what this was all about and it turned out uh, this was Bill Nye's TV show on Twitter and they decided not only to respond to this hashtag Bill Meets Science Twitter but actually invite people scientists who use that hashtag on the show and talk about their own research on the show and I think this was absolutely amazing, really nice idea and I was one of the lucky few who actually got invited um, because I'm doing sleep research and they had an episode on sleep. Um, so yeah, they uh, actually flew me over to LA in one of the Hollywood studios that I actually happened to have seen before as a tourist. So this is one of the places you actually see if you want to visit Hollywood. Uh, that, was, that was crazy. And then I was in the, in the studio and told Bill Nye what I'm doing at DZNE. It was amazing, it was amazing. It was like, um, like what you want to see as a, as, a, as a tourist in Hollywood, but, but better because you're there the whole day and you actually see all that happening. It was, was really, really interesting. Um, so uh, there was a, um, a real Hollywood studio campus and so I went in there and uh, actually so I was lit in there and then <laughs> this, this lady said so this is your room and then there was a Hollywood studio door with my name on it like this is this is the dressing room of Mr. Lars and I was that was really hilarious and I actually got this um, this coffee mug as a as a present a Bill Nye coffee mug so I'm drinking coffee from that all day now um, 
Yeah, it was, it was really cool. There, uh, it was very busy, many people, everybody trying to set up their stuff. Uh, Bill Nye coming down from, this, from, from, from his studio room and, and making sure that he says hello to every, everybody. And he, he was actually, uh, came across as a very, very friendly, very, very open person. Um, so everybody was, was very busy, but I, of course, most of the time I would sit there at the, at the coffee and fruits and cookies buffet and have coffee and fruits and cookies and talk to other people that were, would also sit there. Like one time there, next to me I had a coffee and next to me there was a ninja. And I, I asked the guy why he's a ninja and he turned out to be um, a professional stuntman who was hired for this episode because they have this gag where, where ninjas come down from the ceiling and, and rob the studio or something. Uh, yeah, just to see how, how, that, how that show works and how many people are involved and, and, and how, how it's like. Uh, so, so across the, the day there would um, every now and then would be another person yet again asking me uh, what I would actually want to tell Bill and then they would like listen to that and, and give me advice um, uh, how, how I could replace a, kind of a difficult word with an, e with an easier one or stuff like that and um, I told them what kind of props I imagined using and they would make sure that, that, that we have that and that we have sand that uh, uh, symbolizes the, the measuring the time you, you've been awake. Uh, so we had that on the show and that was, that was really nice. Um, really interesting to see all the, all the different science writers and, and the kind of people who are involved in that. And so they actually have, um, so the, the, the show is recorded with live audience. So at, at some point actually you, you hear next door the audience comes in and then it's like pom 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 pom. Uh, it's be like your, your performance is coming up now and then yeah. So since I was the last uh, item of the show. I actually got to watch the whole, the whole show. I sat in the green room with uh, one guy from Jackass actually. And, well, okay, uh, and so uh, I, I watched the whole show on, uh, in this green room on, on screen happening and then as the last bit I was going on stage and had the opportunity to talk to Bill Nye in front of an audience, in front of cameras for a Netflix show about my research and that was the most amazing thing you can imagine. I really started using Facebook a lot when I went for my first postdoc to, to California, that was 2010. Uh, and that was just nice to stay in touch with the people at home. Uh, so I really started appreciating that uh, social network thing and, and then after four years I came back to Germany and then I had so many friends in California and then Facebook was really nice to keep in touch with them. Uh, so this is why I, I got uh, really using Facebook uh, a lot. Um, then with Twitter, I only got a Twitter account. Well that was actually, then, then I started actually trying to actively do science communication and, and Twitter I only um, uh, started that account for that purpose. So what got me into uh, actively communicating science in the first place uh, was the animal research debate uh, because there was, uh, there was back in 2015 and, and at this time there was so little communication about why we as scientists use animals in research and what are the benefits and how does animal research actually look like and what do we do and, and what would happen if we wouldn't do it anymore. Um, uh, so there was so little of that that I felt Literally, if I don't tell people, nobody will. Uh, so that was a very strong driving force for me to, to, to talk about that topic. Um, and back then, uh, there was an association that uh, was just forming. Uh, it's called Protest. That's a pun, Protest. Um, and they had the same ideas, so I joined them. Uh, and then I did a lot of uh, um, internet content for them. Uh, I would uh, write articles for their, um, for their website or or, or um, communicate on Facebook for them. And so I would um, read uh, on scientific results, which I do anyway all the time as a scientist, but then I would uh, read a little bit more broadly and, and include things like uh, cancer research or other, other results that I usually wouldn't uh, focus on so much in my professional life. Uh, and then I would uh, summarize them in an easy to understand um, way so that a German speaker who doesn't know enough English, sufficient English to read 
uh, up, um, um, the original literature or doesn't have enough scientific understanding to, to read up the original literature that, that he, would, he or she would understand uh, what the result actually is, what it means and in which way animal research contributed uh, to that. And uh, doing that for a while I realized it's, it's a lot of fun to, to actually uh, convey scientific results and scientific thinking to people in an in a easy to understand way. And I, I wanted to um, not restrict myself to only this one message but also talk about things that are of interest for me more broadly. Um, and then I didn't want to, so, so um, intuitively I would do that on Facebook because I used Facebook a lot but I didn't want to annoy all my normal friends by talking about science all the time. Uh, so what I did is I started a public Facebook page that everybody can access so you don't have to be my Facebook friends to see it uh, and my actual Facebook friends don't have to see it if they don't like to. So if they are interested in that they follow it and if not they're not. And that worked out uh, pretty pretty nicely. That's called Lars und die Welt. Lars and the world because I'm Lars and I'm talking about everything in the world that's of interest to me which is mainly science uh, and so I, I, I just can can share my enthusiasm about, about things that I, that I really enjoy um, and I also have as I said the drive to inform people about certain things uh, and a second driving force there, a second thing that I really want people to understand better than many of them do is the a basic understanding of the scientific methods uh, of the scientific method. What do I have to do to test if something is true or to test if something is false and and people understand that so poorly it's 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 amazing if you if you if you look at that there was one person who literally suggested to me that I take two glasses of rice and, and so that was some esoteric telepathic idea that, that apparently is, is out there with, with not too few people that if you think about the one glass of rice differently than about the other then the one will mold earlier than the other and he said if you don't believe it then just just try it out for yourself and of course I wanted to help this person understand that if you assume that your telepathic trick doesn't work then the chance of the one glass of rice getting moldy earlier than the other is 50%. This is like flipping a coin. No matter what the outcome of this experiment would be, it would prove nothing at all. And people don't understand that. And, and they, they do things like, uh, like crazy um, medical advice that's out there in the internet and, and they, I don't know, they, 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 have a, they have a runny nose and then they do some ridiculously flawed, stupid medical ritual and their nose is not runny anymore and then they think this this must be a causative thing and so I, yeah that's another thing I, I try to um, yeah that uh, that motivates me very much to to tell people what you actually would have to do to test if this magic remedy works against the runny nose or makes your rice moldy or not so so I, I enjoy talking about that and I also like discussing with people and they come back and uh, share their experiences and then we talk about that and so that's that's a lot of fun so that's that's the kind of communication that I, that I do and, and I enjoy it a lot and one reason why why I have actual, actually time to do it is that I uh, live in Cologne for family reasons I work in Bonn and in the, during the commute there's only so much work you can get done. In, uh, initially I tried to read scientific papers but uh, it's, it's tough if you try to concentrate so it's much easier to just be on the internet and explain to people what you would have to do if you want to test if the one method of making the rice moldy actually works or not. Uh, it's, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. The, the idea that scientists have to um, have a social media presence uh, comes up recently a lot and I, I have talked to a lot of fellow scientists, colleagues who say uh, there's so many things that, that we are supposed to do and, and, and uh, our CV is so, so filled 
with, with things that are so, so hard to even manage and now we also are supposed to do even on top of that social media. Um, uh, so I would say um, scientists should be approachable. Um, that's not everybody likes that. Some people like to stick to themselves and then all right, do that. But um, it's, it's very important that the public can approach scientists and that they see faces of scientists, that they realize scientists are normal people, um, are, are not the, the nameless guys working for some big institute uh, that always work around, uh, walk around in a, in, a, in a lab coat and you don't see anything else of them. Um, and that's a lot of, a lot of uh, mistrust, I think, towards science and scientists come from the fact that, that, that people don't know how a scientist looks like and what he thinks like. Um, and I think we, as scientists, we have to contribute to public discussions. And, and it's not enough to clarify something, write it up in a um, scientific paper and publish it. Then, then things might be clear scientifically, but just not for the public, because people keep discussing it. And if just in the public there are many voices that say, well, this, what, what's in this paper is actually wrong and the truth is something completely different that might be absolutely ridiculously flawed, but the public doesn't know it. So there must be scientists who, who, who keep talking to the public uh, and, and also keep separating what the facts are and, and where the contribution of science to ongoing um, uh, discussions or debates in the public um, uh, ends and, and, and where, where we have to form an opinion based on the fact. So we, we, we also cannot say as scientists like I, I know what to do because I'm a scientist. I can contribute with the facts but then we have to decide what to do with those facts. Um, so do I recommend you social media? Um, I recommend communicating to the public, period. And I recommend doing it in a way that's most comfortable for you. I use social media because I like social media. I like using uh, especially Facebook in my, in my private time. I do it a lot. And it's, it's, it's a very intuitive way for me to com communicate with other people. If you're not into social media at all, um, your preferred way, way of communicating might be to, to write a letter to the editor of your uh, local newspaper every now and then and, 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 and uh, comment something that was in an article or correct something that was in an article. Uh, but I think it's very important that scientists do speak up and if it's only five minutes a week, if we all do that, then there's more voices from scientists and I think this will, this will make our society better than it is now.